adapted for the adults and children so the pedagogy is very much important for you so at the outset let me just discuss teaching is considered both as a science as well as an art now how it is an art it is an art because it it is very much uh, flexible in nature it is very much flexible in nature it is not a rigid one and the teacher adds his emotion teacher adds is a uh, what thinking his feelings and the psychological aspects to motivate the students and these are not objectively verifiable so it should be regarded as an art and also teacher uses various styles of teaching to discuss uh, important matters of learning so in this from this point of view we can we can rightly say that teaching is an art because there is no systematic process involved those systematic process in involved and that systematic process makes it a science but at the same time it is also very much flexible and it is not a rigid one and it is the teacher has to be emotionally attached with the students his feelings is a just uh, what thinking for the students go a long way in making his teaching and learning process very much effective from these points we can clearly infer that we can clearly conclude that teaching is a is an art then teaching is not only an art but also a science because teaching is systematic it is logically planned and executed and you see before beginning before be, before a teacher begins teaching the objectives are to be fixed and the teaching and activities are fixed what are the teaching materials to be used those are fixed and in this way all things are fixed and go on in a flexible manner go on in a very much uh, systematic way in this way teaching can be regarded as an as a science okay but you should not always be rigid because this if you consider teaching as a science some sort of rigidity we find there systematicness systematic things are there always if you become systematic if you plan if you proceed according to the plan then if something arises new to the situation you cannot handle it for that reason you have to change it you have to become flexible you have to become very much lenient so from this point you have to be very much uh, the teaching is regarded as an art so from our foregoing discussions it is clear that teaching is regarded as both as a science as well as an art next thing is very importantly it is given to us teaching is morally laden activity teaching is morally laden activity teaching is not that you just uh, sell to the students it is not a material as we we go to the market and buy some vegetables buy some uh, things from the market some teachers they think that education or or learn uh, education is sellable in this way the teachers through teaching earn a good amount of money they go to coaching center they uh, just uh, uh, do private tuitions and for money they do not teach the students dedicatedly at schools so from this point we can uh, we can conclude that they they do not consider teaching as a as a as a, a moral moral thing moral matter and in this way the students the parents they are increasingly losing their hope and faith from the teachers so the teachers has the teachers have to be very much uh, 
very much attached to towards their profession and in this way teachers have the moral responsibility of taking into consideration the ability aptitude of the learners and guide them accordingly teacher must teach that character building is higher than academic achievement and good morality is a precursor for successful life teacher should not avoid inquisitiveness of learners related to sex attraction drug drugs stress abuse we said these are not uh, these are actually the teachers try to avoid but there is a strong inquisitive inquisitiveness eagerness among the students to know, know about then they want to know about sex they want to know about the drugs they know, want to know about the uh, uh, abuse suicide bribery all these negative things but the teacher try to avoid this teacher say teacher says don't ask those questions those are not relevant to our topic those are not relevant to our uh, subject matter contents in this way the teacher tries to avoid but he should not do this he should not avoid the inquisitiveness of the learners related to these things these aspects these matters and accordingly the teacher has to just uh, uh, train the students train the learners the, the the life skills okay the life skills now we shall just uh, strike a relationship between teaching learning instruction and pedagogy i have already discussed teaching is imparting knowledge skill to the students teaching is what what is teaching now teaching is imparting knowledge and skill to the students and what is learning learning is a modification of behavior and what is pedagogy pedagogy deals with the science and art of teaching it deals with the matters that helps that help the teacher to transact his business of teaching in the classroom and also what is uh, instruction instruction comes when teacher enters instruction happens when teacher enters into the classroom before entering into the classroom the teacher each what the teacher was uh, doing some service that is educational service education education is a broad thing but instruction is a limited thing that come that comes under the umbrella concept of education 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 is a broader thing under which we can include teaching training instruction all these things so when the teacher enters into the classroom and starts teaching that teaching is considered as an instruction okay and you see instruction h uh, according to gyane instruction has uh, nine events nine events for the teacher has to enter into the classroom and gain in attention of the students then inform the learners of various objectives what we are going to teach today the learner should know you should not start directly the uh, directly your teaching your instruction rather you should you should let your students know that what we are going to learn today so you have to just inform the students about the objectives we are going to achieve at the end of this instruction and you if you have gone through your uh, just self instructional materials study materials provided by ignu you will find that in each and every chapter and unit the the objectives are given after the end of this uh, chapter you will be able to know this you will be able to discuss this you will be able to explain this all these things what are these these are known as the instructional objectives okay so ignos sim sim means self instructional materials they are very much uh, just uh, prepared according to the theory and practice that are clearly and rigidly followed in pedagogy so ped pedagogical principles are rigidly followed by your uh, igno then after 
just uh, letting the students about the objectives it is the time to stimulate stimulate recall the prior knowledge okay that means a connection is to be made by the teacher with the prior knowledge and the present knowledge and the teacher has to what make some stimulus variations stimulus variation is a kind of is a type of uh, is, is one of the types of your core teaching skills stimulus variation that means the teacher has not to be always stereotypical in his teaching he has to change his voice he has to change the modulation he has to change the place of teaching always should not teach the standing in a side or other side or back side or front side he has to change it so these are he has to to change his facial expression gestures postures all these are known as what your stimulus variation then next he has to provide some learning guidance to the students how the students are to learn the contents very effectively after that the uh, the teacher must try to make class interactive how eliciting the performance what is what uh, what do you know eliciting eliciting means just receiving the response from the students okay when the questions are asked by the teacher what does the teacher expect from the students the teacher expects that the students answer his questions in this way this answering to the questions of the two, uh, uh, teacher is known as uh, just eliciting the response okay eliciting the response the next stage that is the seventh stage in ganesh model ganesh instructional process model the seventh step is providing feedback okay after answering by the students these students are interested to know interested to know whether their answers are correct or not if the teacher just gives some knowledge to the students about the result this is known as feedback what is feedback sometimes some students they say feedback is a kind of reinforcement no feedback is the knowledge of result for example you asked me a question i answered you the question and you want to let me know you will say that your question is wrong yes then it is a feedback from you for my answer exactly the teacher asks many questions to the students and the students are interested eager anxious to know their answer whether their answer is correct or not if the teacher asks your answer is correct it is a kind of feedback if the teacher teacher asks your answer is wrong it is also a kind of feedback then the students just act accordingly this is a feedback knowledge of result feedback means knowledge of result then assessing performance it is the eighth step that is you have to assess the performance of the students then evaluation is necessary to estimate the success of the classroom teaching experience okay you know towards the end of the instruction we conduct evaluation then the ninth and the last step in ganes model is enhancing the retention and transfer okay just it is not that the students learn something and forget after the class the teacher should ensure that the learning that has been conducted in the classroom today should be transferred to similar learnings or other other instruction other contents effectively and also should be retained by the students very successfully and effectively okay this is a kind of model developed by uh, uh gyane then what are the concepts that are related to teaching i have discussed uh, in my last class or the uh, just uh, before yesterday i discussed about the learning styles okay learning styles 
today we shall be discussing about the teaching styles okay today we shall be discussing about the teaching style uh, thornton b paul 2013 has suggested four teaching styles the first one is directing style okay here the teacher is the sole authority in the classroom who directs instructs provide guidance to the students in the teaching learning process okay this is almost a traditional type of teaching what you do inside the classroom you always just instruct the students you always the student you, you always teach the students inside the classroom and you put yourself in a very dominant position and you always direct the students to do these things please do these th do these things please do not do these things so do the class is full of do's and do nots okay this is a kind of direct the directing style the next style is the discussing style it is a it is a democratic style and the both teachers and students students and students they go on discussing the contents instruction among themselves so that the learning becomes enjoyable learning becomes a matter of activity and a matter of pleasure here the teacher acts as a facilitator not a sole person as he did in case of directing style in directing style he is the sole person sole authority he is the central person but here the students uh, the student and the teachers they discuss the matter they discuss the content themselves and teacher acts as a facilitator and here the role of the teacher is behind the scene not always the uh, he comes to the forefront then the next one next style is delegating style in this style he just uh, entrusts or delegates some projects some assignments to the students and the students students do this at home or with their friends so it is the delegation of some uh, in some some assignments to the students delegation of some projects to the students here the teacher just entrusts some activity to the students which are done by themselves themselves means students now uh, we shall be discuss about some teaching models some teaching models what are the teaching models school faculties and individual teachers create life in schools by models of teaching they choose and create there are various models of teaching friends there are various models of teaching and the students are taught by the teachers who use various models of teaching and what are the features of a good teaching model actually a good teaching model should be interactive in nature it should not just teacher centered or teacher centric it should be interactive that means if you want to follow a model you will always be interactive it will the model will prompt you to just uh, adopt the interactive measures interactive steps so that your teaching will be interesting and permanent it should be it should help the help for better performance of both teacher and learners so teaching models not only just uh, help students but also help teachers so that they can become better performer it should have both philosophical and psychological background the learning so the teaching models are supported by philosophical background and psychological background philosophical background means just what should be done and psychological background means what is actually there what a child is what a child is what is his interest what is his aptitude what is his intelligence power how, uh, how what is his emotion what is his motivation all these things are psychological principles and philosophical means philosophy is the practical science is the uh, sorry uh, education is, it is said that education is the practical side of philosophy 
learning is the practical side of philosophy so philosophers or philosophy just just uh, give some majors what are to be done and how this is done it is done by the psychology then a model should complement the content which is to be taught okay a model should complement the content the content should be complemented then comes your fundamentals of teaching models mm. fundamentals of teaching models the model should be a model, a model should be just to focus something it is it is the axis of any teaching model the main objectives for whom it is used that means a model should focus focus what it should focus it should focus on two things on whom it should focus syntax that means all the dimensions of the model sir organized syntax means the specific rules and regulations the systematic procedure that teacher follows in the classroom the rules and regulations a model should have good syntax in full of sensation that means the concept of action reaction is to be maintained in, in the model the model should not let the teacher so that the teacher will dominate in the class and the students will be high for and the students will be voted and the students personality will not be at all taken into consideration whether just uh, give importance on in scope sensation that means the mind of the child should be sensitized the mind of the child should be stimulated and, and, and in this way the teaching and process becomes an enjoyable one then comes the social system it is inside the social system that the model should work and it is the bond and interaction between teacher and learner is prepared them for the society because we are ultimately for the society we are not for ourselves okay we are we are to maintain ourselves then come your application perspective the application perspective that means the use and presentation of model to be according to the content to be taught the content is important and it should have the power to uh, apply itself that means the model should ensure applicability of the contents okay there are generally four models the social interaction model behavior altering model third one is information development model the fourth one is personal basis model okay the social interaction model as the name and the stage as the thing it gives importance on group investigation model group investigation model group investigation model means the the, 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 the education the learning is conducted in groups john dewey and herbert kelly they are the pioneers in this type of model kere ga maru ye va do do ye va then social inquiry model here with the students the teachers and the, the, the students peer group they all they all mix together to find something new so the use of this model the laboratory model this model is basically based on experiments to be undertaken in science or biology subjects so here social interaction model and the models on which we discussed then comes your behavior altering model that means your behavior change that is not a direct model that model is what we have discussed just me for some time that is aravindam mr please uh, mr uh, directing directing style of the teacher that means the teacher is the sole person sole authority the central he is the central position Nahi. in the teach learning process so it is direct model what are you program learning program sorry program program model your program learning is also coming under this model that is program instruction style of teaching 
CAI, Computer Assisted Instruction. All these are programmed instruction. These are coming under the AI Altering Model. The practice model is students and the teachers to go for more and more practice. And in this way, the students learn. The third model, that is Information Development Model. Here we discuss about the Ganesh model. That is the sensory memory. And it depends on memorization and practice. Okay. Then Brunner's model. Then Brunner's model. Sir, sir, all of in the Mitra is not muted his microphone. That's why it's creating so many different here. Yes, yes, yes. So please, please, please have a look, sir. Please uh, switch off your microphone. So that uh, uh, others will listen to the counselor's voice clearly. Then, Schumann's model. It is basically scientific inquiry model. Personal basis model. That is personal basis model. The fourth one is personal basis model. That is non-directive model. It is the opposite of the direct model. And here, the, the this. Uh, it is a kind of discussion model, just we discussed previously, discussion style of teaching. Here the students and teachers are allowed to discuss the matters themselves and just infer the or conclude the right things after the class, after the end of the class. Then self-awareness, self-awareness model. Then comes your creative model. Self-awareness means just uh, it gives them opportunity to know about themselves and their peers. They will know themselves clearly. Okay? Then creative model. Creative model means education is nothing but to make the students creative. Nowadays, there is much importance, much uh, just uh, stress is given on the constructivistic approach of the of, of education, of learning. And if we will do this, it will let the students to, to, to be creative in their future. It is a quite similar to delegate style of teaching. Just we discussed before. Delegate style means the teacher gives some assignments, some projects, so that the students themselves find the answer, themselves solve the problem. Okay? Then comes your uh, teaching methods and approach. Very important thing that is teaching methods and approach. At the at the outset, let me just clear about what is an approach, what is a method. Okay, an approach may be explained as a comprehensive way of dealing with particular problem. It is a comprehensive means very vast way of dealing the things. So it is a general plan of action. And method, method is specific plan of action. Method is specific plan of action. Method is an orderly and logical arrangement of ideas based on particular approach. For example, uh, our so method comes under approach. Approach doesn't come under method. Approach is a broad thing. Approach is a vast thing. Approach is a general thing and method is a specific thing. Okay? For example, there are many methods for teaching, many approaches to teach history. Okay? But we have to be very much specific in our approach to teach history, especially to the small children. When, when we, are going to the, we are going to teach the small children, we use storytelling method. And storytelling method is a method because it is a specific plan of action and your approach is a general plan of action for a for a uh, for a senior class we change our method in history we change it into narration come discussion method project method source method and other types of methods available to us now let me after, after having clarified all these all these all these two terms approach and method Appro so just a small thing you please remember students 
uh, approach is just a general plan of action method is a specific plan of action okay approach is a comprehensive comprehensive one and broad one and method is a very small one and specific one okay for example method is teacher centered and it is drawn from the approach of teacher centric approach and the method is learner centered and it has been drawn from the approach of approach of uh, your uh, learner centric approach now we will be discussing about various methods popular methods there are many methods just let me discuss some popular methods one such method is lecture method what am i doing now i am lecturing now okay it is a very traditional method and though it is uh, if you use this method for the small children in primary schools in elementary school or pre primary schools then the students will be bored so i have already told you that this is a method generally used in andragogy andragogy means so teaching the adults you are you are the you are the students of ignobed that means you have some intrinsic motivation to attend the class for 2 hours but a small child a child of class 1 2 3 4 5 they cannot sit just in a, in a, in, a, in a single place for more than 2 hours because they are not intrinsically motivated so they are extrinsically motivated always but you the beard learners beard students of ignu you are all adults and you have developed your intellectual powers and you want to sit for more than 2 hours so though the lecture may be a boring method boring method but it is very much useful for the for for the large amount of stu- large number of students okay but if the lecturers if the teacher wants to make the lecture method an interesting one he can add some discussion he can use some interesting ways interesting styles just including in its in his lecture so as to make the lecture very much interesting then comes your demonstrative method demonstrative method is what the teacher has to demonstrate the teacher has to demonstrate for example while teaching geography while teaching science the teacher has to demonstrate different things the teacher has to demonstrate in the class how to produce a particular gas or how to make a particular kind of chemical reaction inside the class so this the teacher demonstrates the students observes sometimes the students demonstrate the teacher observes and it is a kind of uh, one of the drawbacks is that what are the drawbacks the students are sometimes the students sometimes are not allowed to touch the equipments the instruments that are used in the demonstration for example computers the government have given computers to almost different schools various schools lead schools but those computers are not used properly in the classroom the students are not allowed to touch it use it and in this way it is a uh, drawback then comes your lecture come demonstration method okay i have already told that lecture method can be made interesting by using or uh, mixing with other approach and styles and you have to just on court lecture and demonstration method and it will become another method that is known as the lecture come demonstration method uh, another is heuristic or discovery method heuristic means finding through experience that means searching for something finding through experience that is known as heuristic method that means the searching ability the inquiry ability of the students will be developed by using this method so especially when we are going to teach science geography and other content related subjects we have to use make use of this type of method then problem solving method this method has been developed by gyane okay in problem solving what happens we just fast find a problem first thing is to find a problem 
that means problem solving involves the problem part what is the problem the problem is to be identified why it is taken up that means the reason the rational behind the problem why we have taken this problem then the third step is hypothesis testing the first step is selection of the problem identify the problem okay the problem may be related to the classroom may be related to the content may be related to the content uh, uh, area or school area or teacher area whatever you say the next step is to say something about why that means why it is taken up why did you take this problem what is the relevance if you don't take this if you don't just consider this as a problem what will occur is it an important problem to be solved in this way you have to ask many questions and this is this, this is the second step in the problem solving method the third step is statement of hypothesis or a hypothesis framing okay hypothesis formulation hypothesis means hypo means less thesis means knowledge knowledge is truth but but hypothesis is less than the truth that means when the truth is not established it is in the form of hypothesis for example when i was outside my house during the summer vacation for for uh, seven days i came to my home and found that my garden is devastated by somebody my garden in front of my house has been devastated okay so this is a kind of problem for me i want to just now assume i want to guess what may be the problems what may be the pro what may be the cause of this problem okay so this guessing i start guessing now my for example the first guessing may be the garden may have been or might have been devastated or destroyed by the cows or bulls okay so this is the first hypothesis or guessing the second one is there may have been some cyclone or or some uh, uh, cyclone or kala vaishakhi those may have destroyed my garden this is the second hypothesis second hypothesis means second guessing the third may be there may have been some uh, anti social elements and uh, anti social people who might have destroyed my garden so this is the third guessing that is third hypothesis then i will go on this 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 is hypothesis i think from these examples you clearly know what is what a hypothesis is then to test this hypothesis whether the which hypothesis is wrong which hypothesis is true i do not know now to test this i have to go for the data collection and your data collection is the fourth step of your problem solving method i will collect the data i will ask the people i will interview the people i will just uh, give them some questions ask them some questions and uh, just go on uh, interviewing people go on exploring about the matters how my garden have been has been devastated so this is a kind this is coming under the data collection then the fifth one is e analysis of data fifth one is analysis of data after just getting the data i want to analyze it i want to interpret it okay interpretation is the sixth step the first step is for example 90% people in my neighboring area they told that your garden is not devastated by cyclone or kala vaishakhi rather there are some uh, uh, cows or bulls or oxen that came and destroyed your garden i also found the footprints of some oxen some cows inside my garden so this ascertained me to conclude that the last stage of this problem solving method is 
interpretation and conclusion so i concluded here that my garden has been what devastated by the cows okay the bulls the oxen in this way i have to interpret i have to conclude my my uh, just uh, uh, problem solution should be given at this stage so this is the sixth stage the six stages are now discussed in the problem solving method why did i just give importance to this because uh, after uh, uh, some uh, after some time i will be discussing again this problem solving method uh, I, i at the time the hypothesis will come and i don't want to discuss this again and again okay and another method is the project method okay so it is uh, one when some static or working model is made in science or social science there are some static model of project static project and some working pro working model of the project okay static project means here uh, when some static or working model is made as the as in science or social science okay there are two types of projects one is static or working model the second one is investigative project sorry students there are two types of project one is static or working model and another is investigatory model investigatory project the first one is static project the static project okay in the in the static project uh what some fixed things are given which can be solved inside the classroom but the investigative project where some research or survey is done and then report is made based on findings as i give as i give gave the um, example of uh, the devastation of my garden this is coming under the purview of your what investigatory project because i investigated what is the cause what may have been the cause of the devastation of my garden okay a project what is a project a project is a problematic act that leads to its solution in a natural setting then uh, we will be discussing about inductive and deductive method this inductive and deductive method it is not these two methods are not new to you you might have heard the names of these methods or names of these these two approach while discussing other aspects of education okay the students sometimes learn inductively the students sometimes learn deductively and also the teacher has to use inductive approach and deductive approach accordingly from approach the method comes inductive method and deductive method now friends when we proceed from specific to general okay specific to general it is known as inductive for example i just uh, tell you kotak is a city okay kotak is a city uh hori
so friends am i audible to you now yes sir thank you thank you just an important call excuse me uh, yes so friends we were dealing about inductive and deductive method so inductive in inductive what happens we proceed from just uh, specific to general so here i told that kotak is a city hari is a great person hari is a person and uh, himalaya is a mountain mahanadi is a river and hari mahanadi kotak in this way i underlined all these words and i will ask students students what are these the student will tell that sir hari is the name of a person and mahanadi mahanadi is now underlined mahanadi sir mahanadi is the name of the river himalaya himalaya sir is the name of a mountain honesty honesty is also underlined honesty is the best policy sir honesty is the name of a quality okay so what are these i will ask students what are these the students will tell that sir these are the names then i will say that these names no, are known as noun okay the, these names are known as noun so i just gave them specific examples and proceeded towards a general thing that is the name all naming words are known as noun so this is an example of inductive approach the deductive approach is, is just the opposite of it without giving them examples if i will just enter into the class and ask the students students today we shall be learning about noun and you know nouns are naming words nouns are those words that suggests the name of a place name of a person name of a thing what is this i have not given here any examples have i given any examples here no so it is a kind of deductive approach or deductive method okay here without giving any example i proceeded from theory or principle to the examples then after this i will give examples because hari is a person hari is a hari is a great person that means hari is the name of a person so hari is a noun in this way i will proceed in the deductive method so in our educational sphere in the teaching learning process we use these two methods that that are known as inductive approach sorry inductive method and deductive method interchangeably and especially we we should use inductive method uh in the at the at the elementary level at school level then comes your analytic and synthetic method analysis means just taking a big or complicated problem and concept and trying to understand by breaking it into smaller breaking it into smaller units to understand better for example if i will give you a watch okay you cannot understand what are the what are the constituent parts coming under it if i will go on discussing what are the parts involved or used in watch then i will break the those prior parts and show it to the children exactly in the same way our body our body is a total or whole okay this body cannot be understood if i cannot just give information to the students about the hand about other respiratory system about other systems of the body hand mouth your legs brain all these are the constituent parts so human body is to be broken into the small parts so that it will be easily understood by the students so it is analysis synthesis is the opposite of analysis that means if we just just uh, amalgamate and integrate these small parts into a meaningful one into a just single one that becomes this synthetic method so here from uh, um, what uh, we, we proceed from known to unknown in in your in your synthetic method okay 
in your synthetic method that means small parts are given to the children they want to join it to make a larger part or a meaningful part so known to unknown that is that we proceed from synthetic synthetic method and non unknown to known we proceed from your analysis method analysis means for example watch we do not know what are the parts inside it if we will break the parts then so the students students please see these are the small parts of the watch then the students will understand yes sir these are the small parts and we can understand this is that this is minute and this is a, um, the spring this is the uh, timer this is the second hand this is the in this way okay so analysis and synthesis and inductive and deductive method these are used very uh, very vastly very very vastly in our scientific teaching in our uh, teaching of science geography and uh, biology all these things okay now another important thing we will we'll be discussing that is the phases of teaching okay the phases of teaching so the teaching yeah. phase generally three three phases okay generally three phases teaching has generally three phases the first one is pre active phase the second one is interactive phase the last one is proactive phase last one is proactive phase so friends now we will be dealing about pre active phase what is meant by pre active phase the pre active phase is related to the the activities that are conducted the activities that are conducted by the by the teachers by the teachers before coming to the before coming to the class before taking the class okay so students please this switch of your microphones yes so this the pre active phase comes or it, it is the phase that is generally generally done generally uh, these are the act the activities are done by the, the teacher before coming to the class when you go to the class you plan for it this planning coming under pre active phase when you go to the class before taking the class you just take some you just uh, prepare your teaching learning materials you just think or plan about your procedure activities the questions all these things are planned in this way this is known as the pre active phase pre active phase is very important because you are to just uh, 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 fix your objectives you are to just fix your activities you are to just uh, explore different uh, uh, methods that have to be used in the classroom so unless proper preparation is made then your teaching will not be an effective one so this preparation comes under the your pre active phase here you have to also fix the objectives you have to find out the important contents you have to make a content analysis accordingly you have to choose the teaching learning materials teaching learning activities now friends the second phase is known as interactive phase this is the real phase of teaching when the teacher starts instruction in the classroom the teacher is said to be in this phase that is interactive phase then this the main activities performed in this phase are the teacher has to ask some questions previous questions he has to relate his questions or the present topic with the past ones his present knowledge with the past knowledge an attempt should be made to establish the connection between these two then the point review of the class the teacher knows about the interest the ability that are already within the students and taking into this consideration he has to teach inside the class then he has to present the content in a scientific manner in a flexible manner in an effective manner so that the contents will be 
understood very easily by the students and the students also ask questions also also ask question to the teacher the teacher also ask question to the students this in this way the interaction goes on inside the class and this is all coming under the interactive phase yeah, then your communication process your communication process also very important process that is also coming under this communication is nothing when the teacher teaching to the students it is a kind of communication and the students are also answering are also asking questions this is a communication communication is established okay then comes your post active phase this is the last phase of the teaching here this phase is termed as winding up of the teaching process or in other words it is the beginning of a new that means you have to wind up you have to make your process a closure it begins as soon as the teaching process comes to an end this is not a this is not the last stage and it is not very much on important for the teacher because the teach this stage from this stage the teacher knows that how far he has been successful in his teaching or in his instruction and the students also come to know that how far they have been able to achieve the achieve the contents achieve the knowledge okay if the students are not just uh, answering well or just the if the if the response is not up to a standard then the teacher has to change his teaching styles or teaching methods now after having discussed all these phases of teaching so how many phases students there are three phases the first one is pre active the second one is interactive the, the last one is post active in pre active the preparation is made in the in the in the in the interactive we we, we do the interaction or transaction transaction of the class real class real instruction starts here and in the at the at the end of the end that is post active at, at this stage post active stage what does the teacher do the teacher asks some questions and evaluates the performance of the teachers sorry the performance of the students and also the performance of the teacher is also evaluated by evaluated from this stage if the students answers well this the teacher is successful if the students are achieving well or just if the the teacher is able to bring about the desired uh, response from the students then yes the teacher is effective the teacher is successful in his teaching job okay so all these are very important points which are to be noted by the students sorry especially the student teachers and the teachers while taking the classes now we shall be discussing very important things those are known as maxims of teaching those are known as maxims of teaching there are some maxims okay there are some saying in teaching which should be followed very uh, seriously by the teacher inside the classroom for example one of the maxims is simple to complex so friends do you want to present the instruction uh, the difficult instruction first or the simple instruction first generally you have to proceed from simple to complex if you will just start with complex things difficult things the students cannot understand anything and they will leave your session they will they will not understand anything from your teaching the teaching will be boring okay so you have to first start from simple to complex simple things will attract them towards the learning and slowly and slowly they will proceed towards the teacher has to proceed towards the presentation of the complex materials then comes from the teacher has to proceed from uh, proceed from known to unknown the teacher has to proceed from known to unknown when the teacher starts from previous knowledge to new content to be taught what does the teacher do the teacher proceed here from known to unknown because he has to make a connection between these two there it is not that the students come to the class in a blank mind in a so it is a, some say uh, just mind is a tabula rasa 
that means it is like a blank slate and the teacher writes something in the in that line mind in that slate it is not so the the the, the learners come to the class with some knowledge which which are not which have not been taught which are not taught to the child in school or in education system rather he comes to class with various types of knowledge multi dimensional knowledge that are collected from the culture collected from home peers parents elders so we cannot say that the the, the, the student doesn't know anything he is having a black mind and only we are the teachers to fulfill this mind to fill in this mind because he has a blank bucket a empty bucket and we have to fill the knowledge of water knowledge is compared with the water here inside their bucket no it is not so friends the, so in this way we have to proceed from known to unknown that means the known aspects the known knowledge the known things are to be taken into consideration by the teacher and accordingly the teacher has to proceed to the unknown matters if you present the known matters first the students will be very much interesting very much interested then from concrete to abstract from concrete to abstract in teaching you have to always proceed from concrete to abstract concrete means which are which are tangible which can which can be touched which can be felt okay for example table table is a, is, a, is a concrete term because you can you can touch it you can feel it okay but you see heaven heaven is a heaven is a abstract term we cannot touch heaven we cannot feel it so in this way first especially at the elementary stage the teacher has to proceed from concrete to abstract from concrete object concrete objects are to be presented first then we have to proceed to the abstract and thinkable thinkable matters imaginative matters okay for example honesty is an abstract term if you want to teach honesty english teacher you want to just uh, uh, discuss the term honesty with the students how can you make the students understand honesty because these 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 cannot be taught this this cannot be taught touched it is it is intangible okay so we have to give example from our day to day life where honesty occurs in this way the the, the student can understand yes sir this is honesty we now understand it honesty is a honesty is a is an abstract term so we have to proceed from concrete to abstract then comes your direct to indirect we have to proceed from direct to indirect that means uh, the direct things are taught first then comes your indirect things for example if you want to teach acids science teachers please remember acids then the students are to be given examples uh, of uh, different uh, about the uh, soreness sour fruits cause for the soreness citric acid there are some fruits which are sour in nature and this soreness is related to your acid so direct thing is your fruits fruit and indirect thing is your acid so first teach about the direct thing that is about the sour fruit then comes your the term acid okay then particular to general particular to general that means specific to general the specific fact are to be presented first before the learners and these are joined in organized manner so as to reach the general statements just give some small statements first which are not general in nature then proceed to the general statements then comes your analysis to analysis to synthesis i have already discussed about this analysis synthesis method then empirical to rational you have to proceed from empirical to rational empirical means uh, what is the objective knowledge the first term knowledge for example the ice is cold okay then if you want to touch it then you touch it and 
felt that yes sir really it is cold so the knowledge you gained here it is an empirical knowledge it is associated with your experience it is associated with your just uh, uh, sense so it is a kind of empirical knowledge after that you have to proceed to the rational knowledge rational means it you have to move from uh, some balanced and sensible content okay which are not uh, objectively achieved for example uh, uh, we say about intelligence okay intelligence we cannot measure it they like uh, just uh, physical things we measure potato we measure uh, the body height in the same way intelligence cannot be measured okay so here the we have to proceed from empirical to rational so intelligence is coming under the rational matter then comes your psychological to logical psychological means you have to just give importance to your creativity to your intelligence to your to your uh, aptitude to your attitude in this way then to some logical things okay some complex things then whole to part whole to part and in as insight theory states insightful learning we have already dealt we have already dealt about insightful learning then what does it state it states that any object or incident should be viewed as a whole and it's it is considered in then it is considered in parts okay then indefinite to definite indefinite to definite learners are able to get direct knowledge which is possible only and when they are familiar familiarized with it so indefinite to definite that means uh, the contents to be taught in the class may be definite for teachers but may not be definite for the learners the teacher knows this is definite but the students they do not know therefore the teaching style should be such that the learners are able to get the direct knowledge which is possible only when they are familiarized with it okay the familiarized things give them the direct knowledge now after having discussed all these maxims it is important here also to discuss something about the levels of teaching okay levels of teaching so we have uh, five levels the first one is reception the second one is application the third one is extension the fourth creation and last the fifth one is challenge okay in reception the learner is there to receive information okay receive the information at the level of application the child applies applies its knowledge in different contexts extension that means the knowledge that are gained that is gained in the classroom extended in the external environment in the outside environment fourth is creation that means the knowledge uh, has to be created okay has to be created by the teachers by by the students and helped by the teachers then challenge now learner is ready to challenge his own limits he dares to take extra exploratory attitude that means when the students are empowered with knowledge empowered with knowledge at that time they can challenge other things okay so learning is a kind of empowerment another thing is that teaching is a teaching as a profession so friends in your last uh, block block 4 there has been a detailed mention mentioning detail mentioning detail specification about the teaching as a profession 
just now i want to give you a little uh, information about this that is teaching is considered as a profession it is a it it is it is a sacred profession and it is a dedicated profession and if eu age teachers want to be successful effective so you have to be very much uh, what uh, you have to be very much flexible in your approach democratic and human and also very much uh, professional in your service we will be discussing more about this teaching as a profession tomorrow in block 4 now let us talk about planning planning teaching learning okay planning teaching learning so before planning the teacher has to uh, just take into consideration different aspects okay For one of the aspects is school environment school environment school environment is very important for the teacher before it is to be considered by the teacher very seriously before planning because the school environment just uh, puts an impact in teaching then comes your physical environment physical environment relates to the natural environment the material and tangible conditions of the school the natural environment like air noise water green space all these things are natural environment then built environment like building infrastructure roads transport systems then socio economic and cultural environment all these are coming under the physical environment so these are to be considered very seriously by the teacher before planning okay before planning for the lesson planning the instruction then you are psychological environment the cycle can be based on the interaction of teachers and taught okay and the, the the teacher has to know know his children his student very well before planning the lesson so according to the age according to the mental ability according to the maturation level according to the motivation level interest aptitude and intelligence and the creativity status all these things are to be clearly known by the teacher before planning the instruction then comes your learner learner is, is the soul epitome of the teaching learning process the center of the teaching learning process we know that a classroom classroom has a diverse group of learners our classroom is full of diverse learners different types of learners so in this type of in this type of classroom that is called an inclusive classroom because we are here we do not just entertain uh, only a particular but a homogeneous group of the learners rather we have to give uh, access to the heterogeneous group of learners okay for this the teacher has to plan accordingly then comes your content content is the sine qua non of the teaching learning process there are some teachers who do not just take this content into very uh, into uh, content very seriously so they fail in their teaching learning process so content is content is what the content that are the information provided through the medium of teaching these are the information or the knowledge or the skills that are found in our textbooks okay now after having considered all these aspects all these considerations it is it is a, the right time for the teacher to go for the planning okay so without planning a very important thing is planning we do annual planning that is planning for the whole year we do uh, what unit planning that is planning for the unit okay annual planning is planning for the whole year planning means we are specially giving importance to academic planning also co curricular planning comes under this okay and second one is your uh, unit planning is your unit planning unit planning means just planning 
of a unit you know a unit consists of several lessons okay when the planning is meant for the lesson or for a class that is known as lesson planning when the planning is meant for a unit that is known as unit planning so what is the difference between unit planning and lesson planning sir unit planning is different from lesson planning because a unit consists of several lessons okay for example uh, i want to teach you about the coming of britishers for the western uh, britishers to india under this come your uh, the the coming of uh, starting of business by the uh, britishers in india settlement business settlement in india this is one unit sorry one lesson another lesson may be the just um, battle of palashi the second lesson the third may be the battle of uh, um, what just uh, just killing of mirza for mir qasim so what are these in history in one unit these three or four lesson comes these are known as these are known as lesson planning and the whole when three or four lessons are united and you plan about that unit it is known as unit planning okay unit planning also helps you to progress in your teaching learning process and gives you some direction and guidance in your in your study material there is a, what a format has been given for the unit plan and it is very important because when you come for the workshop workshop you have to plan you have to make a unit plan and also make lesson plan so after unit plan we will proceed to the lesson planning it is very important aspect of the teaching learning process okay unless you plan you cannot teach especially the newly appointed teachers they have to plan not only new appointed teachers but also the experienced teachers they need to plan okay without planning teaching may not be successful if you make for planning properly then you can present the selected content appropriately and also just present some materials teaching learning materials do some experiments ask some questions to the students appropriate level so you will not lose any time here so you have to do a lesson planning now we will deal about the behavioristic model of the lesson planning behaviorist lesson planning what is a kind of lesson plan done by the behaviorist model behaviorist model so the first step is the first step of the lesson planning according to behaviorist model is first step is the purpose or objective you know while planning the lesson you have to first state the objectives these in simple language it can be called the learning outcomes okay in simple language it, it can be called the learning outcomes or the expected behavioral outcomes what the learner will do or behave what will be the behavior of the learner after the end of the instruction after going through the after going through this topic so these are these are to be specified in using the active action verbs action verbs to be used are to be used while specifying the objectives what is action verb what is verb for example i will say that the students will understand understand the mechanism mechanism of the uh, of the uh, what electric bell mechanism of the electric bell so what is the i used a verb here that is the student will the, that is understand understand is a verb but it is not an action verb okay it is not an action verb i can say that the students will just uh, explain the uh, just uh, formation or uh, materials that are used in the electric bell okay here the explain the verb explain refers to action verb Ex explain is an action verb so while specifying the learning objectives the first step which is the first step of the behaviorist lesson planning you have to use the action action verb this is 
this is specified by robert mager robert mager's approach he is an educationist he always says that you have to use the action verb while specifying the while specifying the what learning objectives because when you will say that the student will know about mahatma gandhi this knowing is a verb not an action verb but if you will say that the student will explain about the uh, contribution of mahatma gandhi to the freedom movement of india then i used an action verb here that is explain okay and explain can be easily evaluated and just verb that is a cognitive verb that is no understand imagine feel these are all simple verb and cognitive verb this cannot be assessed and evaluated by the teacher inside the class now the second step is anticipatory set step that is focus uh, that means in this step we have to acquire the attention of the learners for the lesson that means you have to connect connect it the present lesson with the with the previous one in a simple language we call it introduction the third one is input that means what you are going to teach what we are going to teach the skills the vocabulary the models the theories the concepts all these are coming under this then next the next one is modeling at this level the teacher shows a graphic form or demonstrates to the learners it is relaxed so it is related to the examples used by the teacher throughout the lesson and it is called modeling that means you have to use different models examples charts graphs so that the understanding of the students will be very much uh, easier then comes your guided practice here the practice that is done by the that done by the students should be guided guided by whom the teacher the teacher has to guide them then comes your checking for understanding okay it is a kind of formative evaluation inside the class you go on asking several questions to the students am i not asking you questions i am also asking some questions okay what are these these are formative questions because these questions help you in the formation of the knowledge knowledge is knowledge is formed inside the classroom now so to to anal to 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 analyze to to evaluate this we have to use the formative evaluation formative questions then comes your independent practice okay independent practice that means it is the seventh step learners practice on their own here here learners work on own such as presentation homework all these are given the learner just uh, present the topic they present the uh, learned material learned things the teacher uses this to verify the progress last one is closure you have to close it here teacher ask some assessment questions generally in your lesson planning at city level we we do this at the application stage or the evaluation stage we ask them some objective based to objective questions these are coming under the closure step okay now we will be discussing about the lesson planning we do not want to discuss the concept map friends concept concept map we have already discussed and teaching through concept map you know what is a concept map concept map is a broader term that is broken into small parts so that the small parts can be easily understood by the by the learners okay and the small parts are logically connected with the with with a with a larger part with the large parts okay and the large parts are connected with some connecting words okay and this is all about your concept map and using concept map you can piece very well it is a graph it is a diagram okay so that the no, a main knowledge can be interpreted or fragmented or broken into smaller pieces so that the smaller pieces could be easily understood and a link could be established with the smaller pieces with the larger one so i do not want to repeat it again uh, yes 
then another thing is constructivist lesson planning i discussed about the behavioristic model of the lesson planning now i am going to discuss about the constructivist lesson planning that is 5e approach okay 5e approach there are five e's what are those e's the first e stands for engage the second explain the third elaborate the engage explore the, the second one is explore the third one is explain the fourth one is elaborate the fifth one is evaluate okay these are the five e's five e's the first e stands for engagement or engage here what we have to do we have to engage the student that means the students are to be attracted towards the present knowledge present teaching for this here the, the, the teacher is, is working as a facilitator the teacher is never just dominating the students the students are using this knowledge using the instruction for construction of the knowledge okay here it is not a dom dominated class by the teacher rather the teachers position is like a facilitator like a helper like a friend philosopher and guide okay so first is a e is engagement that means you have to engage the students engage the present learning present topic with the past topics past knowledge past experiences as i have told you have to proceed from known to unknown okay from known to unknown that means some known events are to be connected with this unknown event unknown means the new topic we are going to teach so this is the engagement you have to engage the students the second one is explore exploration means the students will find out find out the present topic find out only have to have the opportunity to get directly involved with phenomena and materials by actively exploring their environment and maintaining materials at this stage learners work together in turn in teams therefore so groups have to be formed teams have to be formed while you are going to teach using the 5p models of teaching when you will come from workshop and after that you will be given assignment to teach in the classes by planning your lessons and friends you have to plan your lesson nowadays by using the 5p model okay not the traditional and herbertian steps previously we used to use the traditional model that is they have uh, they have uh, three steps the first step of the lesson planning is introduction the second one is presentation the third one is evaluation but nowadays if you want to teach to the students you have to teach them using the 5p lesson 5p model so the second one is exploration that means here the students have to be uh, divided into several groups and they have e <clears throat> is explain so friends who is to explain now the teacher okay or the student here the teacher's role is like a facilitator not like a uh, teacher so here the teacher has to just facilitate and the student has to explain okay the student has to explain the, the the students who are actually forming the groups they have to explain the the, the content themselves they have to explanation they make explanation explanation from teachers provide the language by using the language that means they have to articulate the content in their own language they should have the uh, have the quality to explain it themselves but in our traditional model what happens the teacher explains all the things but in 5b approach the students they will explain if some mistakes are there it will be rectified by their friends by other groups or if not at all possible by their other groups then the teacher is very much there to help them but but the teacher <coughs> automatically doesn't go and 
he has to lead the whole class to the students here the students will be able to explain the difficult uh, terms concepts themselves this is all coming under the third e that is known as explanation the fourth e is elaborate elaboration is just an extension elaboration is an extension of the present knowledge in some new situations when the new when the new gained knowledge is applied some new situation new contexts okay that is known as elaboration so the students will be allowed to just use the present knowledge in some new context new field new situations so that the learning will become very much meaningful them and fruitful them and it will lead to the construction of the knowledge so friends the last e is evaluation evaluation at the at this stage the teacher has to ask some questions the questions are related to the content and by using this e or evaluation the students evaluate themselves and also the teacher comes to know how far how, how far the teaching learning process is effective so uh, these are the five e's which are to be very much clearly understood by the by the learners sorry by the teachers and in your study material a, a form okay, now we will proceed to how to organize teaching okay how to organize teaching so for designing instruction friends for designing instructions we have to make some basic consideration for selecting a method method cannot be selected haphazardly for example you are going to teach history you cannot use here mm -hmm. the uh, cannot use here the scientific inquiry method those scientific inquiry method also can be used in some topic of history but generally in history we use storytelling method narration come discussion method and also source method uh, then dramatization and other things so you have to be very much Uh, careful while selecting the method then comes your learners while selecting while planning for the lesson you know you should know your learners their aptitude their interest their motivation level their uh, just uh, age maturation their uh, capabilities all these things have to be clearly visible to the teachers mm -hmm. so that he can just uh, perfectly plan for the students now the subject matter the students have to know the subject uh, the, 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 the teacher has to know the subject matter the subject matter is very important for the for the for the uh, teacher without knowing the subject matter he cannot teach at all the subjects like science and mathematics are scientific in nature whose major emphasis is to verify the existing knowledge this for the knowledge so all the <laughs> so for this separate methods like inquiry method problem solving method is to be used but for speech language okay language is not a content content related subject it is a skill based subject here some practice is to be done so for this drilling and practice is to be given importance so you have to know the subject first then from the subject you will select your method then intended learning outcomes these are known as the expected learning outcomes expected learning outcomes these are to be fixed or designed by the teacher before coming to the class before designing the lesson plan the teacher has to clearly articulate clearly specify what are the what are the basic learning outcomes is the, the students are going to uh, so this to what will be the expected how um, just behavior the students are going to show after end of this topic so it is these objectives have to be clearly specified by the teacher before before coming to the class in their lesson plans then learning environment okay learning environment that is no also known as the ecosystem of the school ecosystem of the class the learning environment should be very much uh, should be very much conducive the research says that research says that in a conducive environment in a friendly environment 
if the school building is a proper one there is proper ventilation lighting a democratic atmosphere existing in the school and there is a good relationship existing the, among the teachers who and you have to also just to discuss about the available resources what are the available resources for the uh, what are the resources available for the teachers because without these resources you cannot you cannot teach resources are of various types human resources material resources non material resources all these things are to be taken into consideration then teacher ability teacher ability is also another criterion how much able the teacher is to transact the lesson effectively okay then uh, after having discussed all these things it is pertinent here to just discuss some teacher centered methods and some learner centered methods there are some teacher centered methods there are some learner centered learner centered methods okay you should know this which method Are which method is to be used by you? It is not that teacher teaching method. Uh, sorry, sorry. Teacher center method are bad, and the student center method are all good. No, you have to make a balance among these. A balance between these two methods: teacher centered and student centered. Okay. Teacher <laughs> method is is a kind of teacher centered method, but the teacher can make the lecture method very much effective. by using some interesting things by adding some interesting events in it okay the materials are to be used and the students are to be involved in the lecture method okay so to add always one way communication then uh, demonstration method demonstration method though it is more interesting than the lecture method but it is a teacher dominated or teacher centered okay but some precautions have to be there demonstration method uh, should be planned and uh, planned beforehand and it should be rehearsed and the purpose of the demonstration should be made clear to the students active participation of learners should be there okay training in scientific thinking should be there then team teaching this is a kind of teacher dominated method but it is when the teaching is done by more than two or two or done by two or more two more than two teachers it is known as team teaching nowadays it is being practiced very heavily in our schools because we the, a single teacher cannot fulfill all the requirement of the students in a class so if teaching is conducted with the help of other teachers that means through team teaching we will uh, just uh, gain profit in our teaching learning process then uh, after having discussed uh, all the teacher centered approach or methods we will be discussing about some learner centered method that is one of the learner centered methods is inquiry approach that means here the students have to inquire themselves okay have to inquire themselves they have, they have to investigate they have to do their projects they have to discuss they have to prepare reports they have to go to the fields okay so the scientific inquiry is one of such methods that help the students to know more and more about scientific problems to discuss more about the scientific problem and solve this accordingly another student centered method is problem solving okay problem solving here i have already discussed this in my previous discussion when i was discussing selecting a problem then just rational or why this problem is selected then third one statement of hypothesis or just uh, guessing some solution and the fourth one is collecting data or just uh, the, the the fifth one is interpretation analysis interpretation the sixth one is drawing conclusion or inference so all these are coming under this method that is problem solving method 
the uh, another important method is brainstorming okay brainstorming that means your brain will be stormed a storm is coming on fun in day or two and uh, it will also affect partially to odisha and we are we are cautious about this and the storm will just uh, activate will activate all the storm will storm us the storm will make some impact that means when our brain is stormed brain is stimulated stimulation in high form is known as storming okay when our brain is stormed it is known as brain storming that means a single brain the philosophy behind is that the thinking behind is that a single brain won't help always to solve the problems what we have to do we have to just think it with our friends teachers so that students so that the a number of solution will come emerge if, if there are 40 students in the classroom they will so, they will suggest 40 solutions to a particular problem then after that we will select some few important solutions and these important solutions will be novel ones will be very much important for solution of the problems so this is known as brainstorming brainstorming is very much important for example i will allow the students to just uh, uh, say what can be done for the solution of the population crisis population problem in india for that they will project several solution okay uh, no, then sure. comes your cooperative learning cooperative uh, learning nowadays there is throat cut competition among the students the students are involved in various leg pulling process to achieve academically they are not helping each other in the learning process but cooperative learning is an innovation in the teaching learning process where the students learn cooperatively okay they learn from each other and in this way learning become enjoyable tension free and also effective okay then another thing is group activities group activities are to be conducted in a various way in this school then discussion method i don't want to discuss it because discussion method has been discussed the by various teachers in various forms okay then we will be discussing about the teaching learning resources the teaching learning resources are of three types one is audio types another is visual types the third one is audio visual types so the teacher has to just uh, experience sorry uh, include all this uh, teaching learning resources in the teaching learning process okay besides this classroom is also considered as a resource teacher himself is a resource okay community is a resource from community you can learn various things then nowadays improvised resources are used like ict okay information communist communication technology they are also very heavily used what you we are using now the is through ict we are also able to teach you okay in this corona period covid 19 period we are also able to touch with you with this ict okay ict and multimedia they are to be extensively used by the teachers nowadays and if you we do not know then we have to be very much well conversed with this and the last topic is management that is management of classroom teaching in management comes various things manage of management of classroom management of time okay the classroom management is a very important technique if you teach and your students are quarreling with each other are creating noise disturbing in your class then what will you do you have to manage your class very effectively okay the classroom management is to be is to be learnt is to be practiced by the teacher okay if you are very much uh, clear about your uh, topic clear about your content then you can easily easily control your class okay but there are many factors that that affect the 
मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द क्लासरूम क्लासरूम मैनेजमेंट क्लासरूम मैनेजमेंट इज अफेक्टेड बाय वेरियस फैक्टर्स वन सच फैक्टर इज इफेक्टिव इंस्ट्रक्शन इफ योर इंस्ट्रक्शन इज नॉट इफेक्टिव देन द स्टूडेंट्स विल नॉट बी वेरी मच अट्रैक्टेड टुवर्ड्स योर क्लासरूम देन सेटिंग एंड इंप्लीमेंटिंग रूल्स ओके यू हैव टू सेट रूल्स फॉर एग्जांपल यू मस्ट नॉट रिपीट द क्वेश्चंस अगेन एंड अगेन इफ दिस हैपेंस देन द स्टूडेंट्स विल नॉट listen to your first question seriously because they will think that the our teacher will repeat it again so we will not listen to the questions when it is asked first by the students so you have to set the rule that students i i will not repeat it again so when i say the question please listen it very silently and minutely okay then there are some interventions you have to manage it some disturbing elements disturbing children okay that are to be managed by the teachers then comes the inclusive inclusive classroom the term is not not due to you there are some special children there are some diversified children who are included in our classroom then the inclusive classroom just demands demands various techniques methods procedures to be followed by the teachers for this universal technique are to be followed okay then another is management of time okay management of time is very important there is uh, there are uh, several times the first one is available time the first one is available time how much time is available for our school in available time your recess comes your total schooling hour starting from 10 am to your 4 pm that is available time available time that means what is the available time for the school for the whole year this is known as available time then allocated time sorry allotted time allotted time that is the time allotted for the class maybe 40 minutes class or 45 minutes class how many classes are there available in a year or in a week okay this is known as allotted time another time is engaged time in also 45 minute class we take the uh, uh, attendance of the students we just discuss other matters uh, like examination other matters like uh, another things so which are not uh, Uh, related to the instruction then it is not the engaged time engaged time is that time which are properly used for the instruction only okay if you take attendance and it takes 5 minute this is not included in the engaged time this is included in the allotted time but not in the engaged time so you have to enhance the engaged time and reduce the allotted time okay then and also engaged time can be enhanced if you just go to the class with proper preparation and also there, there is a transition time transition time means when you just proceed from one step to another for example one experiment is completed and another experiment is to be started in between these two some time is wasted this is known as transition time this transition so planning should be properly made so that this transition time will be effectively used it will not be wasted okay so all these are the for time management so you have to increase the engaged time transition time transition time needs need not be wasted and in in completing it and i uh, towards the end i want to ask some questions 
no no i you don't want to ask question the students have to yes, have yes to thank, ask thank you thank you thank you dr pradhan thank you very much I, for uh, you know uh, briefly touching upon almost every content which are presented there in block 3 of your bs 1 2 so our students must have understood uh, at least uh, to a great extent uh, about uh, the various uh, factors affecting teaching learning process teaching in fact teaching teaching sir. learning process is a very broad domain and uh, within a period sir, of sir. two hours it is extremely difficult to cover everything but uh, since our sir, students sir. are expected to be you know experienced people because you know they must be teaching in some schools or uh, in some uh, teaching learning institutions so they must have also gathered quite a good amount of information and knowledge pertaining to the teaching learning process and uh, you know it, it would have been much easier for them to grasp the matter uh, therefore uh, you know now it is time for interaction if there is uh, anything uh, related to teaching learning process they can put up and we'll take up the questions maybe 5 10 minutes maximum as you have said that you have some engagements so you have to proceed so maximum 5 to 10 minutes we'll take up and then we'll wind up sir sir okay sir thank you sir so let me let me see let me see if there is any question in the chat box <clears throat> uh, yes nirupama das is asking demonstrate demonstration method and lecture lecture method are follows in which approach demonstration method and lecture method are are, are followed in which approach so she wants to know what is the approach the, under which demonstration method true, and true. lecture method true. yeah yeah actually method and approach i have already told them approach is a broader term under this broader umbrella umbrella term comes method okay for example student centric approach under that comes student centered method okay method is the specific term where the just uh, um, and, and, and the approach is a broader term okay child centered the lecture method is is not a child centered approach and not uh, coming under child centered approach it is coming under the teacher centered approach the approach is a broader term and method is is a, is a specific term used for this under this okay method there is no the difference between method and approach okay so and there is another approach, question approach is sir approach is broader term method is just simpler or uh, just uh, that is specific yeah, yeah. term yeah it is quite understandable these are two simple things uh, there is another question by uh, mili misra mili misra is asking uh, sir kindly differentiate between explanation and elaboration under 5e um, you know process yeah yeah 5e med models of teaching as i have already told that previously in our traditional model of teaching the teacher used to explain the teacher used to explain but now with the with the with the coming of 5e model the explanation is done by the students themselves after going through the content and and after understanding the content after just uh, exploring the content they are in a position to explain it verbally explain it verbally or theoretically that means it will they will they will be able to articulate and say what are the contents what are the uh, just uh, teaching points the teaching point the teaching the contents the met, the matters involved in the content the prob, the just uh, major things in the teaching they will be just explaining they will tell this is explanation the students will explain the things and elaboration is an extension of the present knowledge gained by the student in some new situation in some new field in some new and innovative innovative uh, in the process just a new situation when we use the knowledge present knowledge in some new situation it is known as extension or elaboration so elaboration is the extension of the knowledge 
okay okay so there is another question what is the uh, another question by rasmi rekha behura she is asking what is the difference between brainstorming and discussion method yeah yeah discussion is a simpler um, form where uh, just a teacher and students or students and students go on discussing about a particular problem or about a particular topic but in brainstorming a particular problem is taken and various brains are used or engaged to produce a number of number of responses okay various brains are used to just produce a number of a large number of responses for example 40 people are involved to discuss a particular problem then we will elicit from them 40 responses towards the solution of that particular problem so this is coming under the brain term normally normally brainstorming method is used in the higher level not in the primary level or secondary level sir, because sir, sir. Uh, because you know uh, this includes higher uh, higher level of you know psychological process sir, sir. normally when when a uh, you know uh, subject or content is to be discussed let that particular content or subject be put in front of all the members of the class and let everybody sir. react to that particular problem isn't it sir. every reaction is a kind of explanation to that particular uh, problem or topic so that way sir. brainstorming takes place normally in the university level or uh, you know when there are there is a, a, a small group discussion or something like that brainstorming is used after just uh, getting the solution from the students or from the children then discussion could be met exactly on those solutions so nirupama das is asking uh what is the difference between educational management and educational administration <clears throat> it is a simple thing management just planning preparing executing and evaluating just uh, using some less amount of effort how can we just gain more and the, how can the output will be very much uh, output will be great just involving less amount of uh, input if we will be able to get the maximum output then it is a kind of management and administration administration and management they are interrelated terms an administrator has to manage properly otherwise he cannot be a good administrator for example the headmaster in in the classroom sorry in the school if he doesn't manage his school or classroom or the teacher well he cannot be regarded as a good administrator so administration and management they are interrelated they are dependent upon each other so management is required for the teacher management is required for the headmaster management is required for the uh, students also but administration done by the administrator the administrator in school especially it is the headmaster or principal okay so there is uh, another question this is by simantini mishra sir please explain jigsaw which is a group activity jigsaw jigsaw actually it is a puzzle type of activity where the students are uh, given some problematic act problematic materials and Uh, the solution is required from the students puzzle activities okay word puzzle sentence think, puzzle okay. and i think this is the last question that we will take uh, uh, today that is uh, what is the strategies we should adopt to manage an inclusive classroom tofan malik is asking tofan malik is asking what strategies we should adopt to manage inclusive classroom sir our classes are actually nowadays becoming day by day inclusive because there are diversified learners which are entering to our classes and yes. for these diversified learners we cannot adopt a particular or single type of methodology single type of technique to teach them so for them for them we have to use some universal technique for example a blind child is there so we have to use a computer 
uh, in the classroom in their computer there will be some help for the blind child there will be some help for the anal children medium medium uh, group children and also there will be some help for the uh, for the for the blind child that will help for example braille the child will be able to write these things in braille the computer will help the child blind child in this way so in inclusive classroom our classes should be inclusive and the teacher has to very much it is, it is a challenge me for the teacher nowadays because this is a heterogeneous class now and in homogeneous we are very much comfortable to teach in heterogeneous class there are blind children there are um, physically mentally impaired children retarded children for those the teacher needs to just acquaint himself with various knowledge and skills to deal with the students well uh, i think i think uh, uh, these are some of the questions which are put by our students now it is time to wind up so before i wind up i must thank you very much for taking such a marathon session for 2 hours and 10 minutes and uh, of course some questions were put by the students uh, almost five six questions were asked and uh, if there is any further question uh, which is still bothering our students they may send those questions through email and we will respond to each one of them separately uh, tomorrow exactly 2 pm uh, sorry but 10 o'clock in the 10 am sir sir we shall be sir yeah we shall be dealing with the last block that is block 4 sir sir years 1 2 3 so i request you to kindly come exactly at 10 o'clock so that uh, we'll start our discussion and uh, i also request the students to kindly log in exactly at 10 o'clock everybody sir. you know everybody is coming late and we are waiting till 10 minutes past at uh, uh, 10 am that means up to 10 10 we are waiting so please come uh, and log in as quick as possible so that our discussion will begin and you will get ample time to listen to our counselor so thank you dr pradhan thank you very much for coming and presenting and thank you students we shall be meeting tomorrow exactly at the same time till such time thank you very much and goodbye thank you thank you respected directors for this thank, thank you sir thank you